In all the years we've been talking to potato farmers, we've learned that potato farming is a gamble, and it's been around longer than most. Early Spanish explorers planted potatoes in their gardens near Nia Bay. Even after the Spanish left, members of the nearby Bacaw tribe found the potatoes in the overgrown gardens and continued growing them. Chuck Brown is a USDA potato researcher and historian in Prosser. He says potatoes were highly valued among the tribal members. Anybody that did a lot of labor, and almost everybody at that time had to do a lot of labor, would value potatoes as a source of energy. If you look at the Macaw diet, for instance, it was almost all uh, things that you would get from the ocean. So it was animals that they were harvesting. Uh, potato uh, that they grew in gardens and, uh, and, and knew how to cook would be a very valuable thing. In the Skagit Valley, homesteaders from northern Europe were moving to the bogs of this coastal area. The early settlers tackled the wetlands and marshes of northwest Washington with true grit, determined to make the bogs a haven for farming. Both Jerry Nelson and Roger Knudsen are descendants of these pioneers. One of the first things that they had to do here was create drainage and put up the dikes so they could farm it. And a lot of that was all done with brute strength and awkwardness. If it wasn't for the dikes that those old timers put in, uh, every tidal cycle we would have water clear this far up. And so they reclaimed this entire Skagit Valley. They, they dug ditches and drained the ground was the most important thing so that, that they could farm it. Meanwhile, most of the areas of central Washington were sagebrush, grasslands, and desert. By 1900, Congress passed the Reclamation Act, which funded irrigation projects in the Yakima, Wenatchee, and Okanagan Valleys. With the irrigation water, farmers started planting new crops, including potatoes. Bob Halverson remembers that planting wasn't easy and harvest was backbreaking. It was all picked up by hand, put in a sack. You went through and lifted the potatoes, and then the people went through and put those, they had a sack that they had a potato belt. They drug that sack and filled it, and then they stopped it and made another. And then those were picked up by hand and put on the wagon and taken to town. Irrigation expanded throughout the Columbia Basin with the construction of the Grand Coulee Dam. This opened up a new hope for farmers across the West as water finally hit the central Washington towns in the 1950s. Rella Ryman's father, Hank Thompson, was one of the new basin farmers. It really was the wild frontier when we hit the basin. But it was so hard and you just tackled, you just dove in and started clearing the land and making it work. With processors and packing plants emerging throughout central Washington, the farmers had to stick to their guns to get a fair price. Nelson Cox remembers the early years in the basin. When I was younger, there were 30 or 40 growers right here in this area. Each small farm grew 15 to 50 acres. Yeah. We had all these different fresh back facilities so we could go different places fresh. And then we had lots of different processors. It used to be the scare in the shortages of marketing really made it fun when you went to sell. And the market could be a boom one day and a bust the next. And there's so much more to the story. To learn more about the history of potato farming in Washington, visit wagrown.com for a link to their recent documentary film.